Hey, this is Rip with IMSI, and I'm going to show how I create an ISO uh, for a master disk. All right, so the first thing I usually do is base the new ISO on an older one. So I have all, an archive of all my ISOs here. So what I would do is I would right click and there in the local menu, there's a place to extract, to go to power ISO and extract. Uh, what I did, I extracted it to a folder and I named that folder uh, TurboCAD LTE version seven. So right now the contents of TurboCAD LTE version seven is the same as TurboCAD LTE uh, Pro six. So it is TurboCAD Pro. So let me change the uh, folder name just so I can be sure. All right. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out what else needs what needs to be replaced. So I've got this bin folder. So I'll want to replace uh, both the 64 and 32-bit versions. So I'll want to uh, go to where I have these downloaded. in my downloads folder. So then I'm just going to, first I want to delete the contents of both these folders. So you just need to make sure that you put the 64-bit in the 64-bit folder and the 32 in the 32. So I'm going to copy over the 64 go back to to bin go to 86 get the 32 bit version so now th if i run the installers it will install the pro 7 versions but there's a lot of other stuff that i need to uh change here. So the auto run file, all I need to change here is V7. So I change the label to be TurboCAD LTE V7 Pro. It's still going to launch uh, setup.exe on startup. And the icon is, uh, is not going to change. So I'm just going to close out of this, make sure I save it. Now, if the name, uh, if I was going to replace the icon file and it had a new name, I would need to go back into Auto Run and change that right here. So this is the setup.exe. I double clicked it twice just to make sure that it was uh, the user account control, and this is the. Uh, this is the digital signed copy of this. If you're using a non-digital signed, uh, if you're using one of my older ISOs and replacing it, you might have a non-digital signed uh, setup.exe and you'll want to replace that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit no. So then setup.ini. So there's nothing here that we actually have to change uh, in this case. So uh, things to look out for here. This needs to match this directly. Otherwise, it doesn't show up. Here, I'll show you what happens. So I'm just going to throw a 2 in here, close it, save. I'm going to run setup.exe. And you see that the uh, that entry is completely missing for the install TurboCAD LDE 32-bit version. So I'm going to go back into setup.ini. Delete what I added. In both install TurboCAD LTE and install TurboCAD LTE X64 are both there. So this is a, and so let's look at the background image too. Um, so we're not going to need to replace the background image 
But if we did, we would go into setup.ini and see where these settings are. This is where we would put the name of the background image. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move some of uh, move the background image to a different place so we can see what happens. So I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to name this folder images. And I'll go ahead and drag both the ICO file and the background image. Now what happens when I run setup.exe? I get this error. So I'm going to need to fix this. So I'm going to copy the name of that folder, open setup INI, paste, put the slash, close out. I'm also going to need to do the same thing in auto run for the icon. Control V backslash, close, save, run setup exe, and now everything is back to the way I wanted it. So let's go back up, back into the setup.ini folder and go over some of the other settings. Um, the text offset, you can choose to offset the text uh, to the left or to the right, or up and down. So let's set exit offset that a little bit. Now you see that exit is nudged a little bit to the right. So you can do that if there's a if your purposes require it. Let's go back into setup.ini. So let's go back to settings and start point. Start point starts from the top left hand corner of uh, the image and it goes down into the right. So I believe the first number is down and the second, is no, the first number is to the right and the second number is down. So let's lower all the text a little bit. Let's put in 200. So now the uh, text is a little is a little lower on the screen on the uh, image here. So it's pretty much a little. If you have if you have to if I had to replace the background image, it might look a little bit different. So it's just a little bit of trial and error getting the text on the background image uh, the way you like it. And so there's an option to add sounds, uh, which I really don't ever use. You can change the font, the size, and the weight, uh, depending on how big the background image is, you may want to do that as well. Uh, so this is, uh, most of it's pretty intuitive. Some of it's a little quirky. It's just a little bit of, tr a lot of trial and error uh, getting everything in order on this. So after I've checked everything, I've got the bin folder, I've got the new builds here, Pro 7. Pro 7, let me check the auto run one more time, got the label correct, it's, it's going to open setup exe, got setup ini, let's run setup dxe just to make sure, you just want to make sure everything is spelled correctly, got everything like that. So we are ready to make the ISO. So what I do is I just select everything inside the folder. I right click. I go power ISO, add to image file. And when it comes up, it gives me the options here where I want to save it. So it's, uh, so I'm going to want to save as an ISO file. Uh, this way I can just copy it directly over to the in-house burner. And then I want to 
I can change the location if I like, but I'm just gonna have it go ahead and create it right here in the same folder as TurboCAD Pro. I'm just gonna go ahead and create it in this folder, hit okay. It will take a couple minutes to get everything in there. But that's pretty much it. Now I can copy this directly to the in-house burner. I can upload it to the download server for our partners or HP to download for backup. But before I do anything, I want to remove any spaces in the name. You just don't want spaces in file names. Oops, it's not quite done. I close out of Power ISO, try again, and there I go. Now I can put this right on the download server and it's ready to download because there's no spaces in the name. And that's it.